groups that are participating in United Nations stroke AU missions across the world, either wet or through dry lease, uh, because uh, he has indicated, <coughs> sorry, whether the lease it is or which whether dry or uh, wet lease, Madam Speaker, is how much money uh, has been reimbursed by United Nations stroke uh, uh, African Union to Kenya over the last five years. Uh, Madam Speaker, to answer that, including I've had a mention about uh, the United Nations Approval Security Council or participation of our ever courageous police officers in Haiti, whether Kenya Defence Forces will be part of it. I, I thank you, Madam Speaker, for that uh, allowance. Yes, yes, Well, Speaker, uh, thank you uh, uh, to the question to my Honorable Senator for Nandi. Yes, uh, Kenya has participated in peacekeeping missions uh, since time immemorial. And Madam Speaker, it's very sad. At one time, we were number four, country number four in peacekeeping mission. Over the years, we, have now, we are now at number 41. And that's why we have made a deliberate attempt, particularly under this administration, to make sure that we regain our position and do better. Because Rwanda, which was behind us, now is number three, I think, in peacekeeping mission. So, and I really want to thank uh, uh, Parliament for the passage of the peace fund. The passage of the peace fund was very, very critical. It was passed three months ago, and now we are putting the implementation structure. How much we have received from Artemis the last five years in terms of reimbursement, roughly we receive about 500 million every year. So in five years, it's like 2.5 uh, uh, billion uh, Kenya shillings that we have received in the last five years. And this is part of why uh, we brought the, the peace fund. So the peace fund, uh, unlike now, the money goes to the national treasury. It doesn't come to the Ministry of Defense. But now we have made a deliberate attempt, passed through the cabinet. We want the peace fund to be domiciled at the Ministry of Defense. So that money, we will use it to modernize and to buy more equipment for our security forces without uh, putting more pressure on the exchequer. Madam Speaker, thank you. I believe you are satisfied by that response. Senator Boni Halwale. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, allow me to congratulate the minister. He's one of the ministers who takes our calls and who calls us. Thank you, minister. Minister, before I ask you my question, allow me to invite you to the provisions of Article 35 of the Constitution, specifically Article 1A, which gives every Kenyan the right of access to information in the custody of the government. Can you please balance this with our age-old tradition in Parliament where you are free to ask the Speaker to allow you to table that information in camera? I want to invite you. Having done so, allow me to ask you my question. Haiti is 12,119 kilometers away. It takes 13 hours of flying to reach Haiti. And the cheapest flight minister is 220,700 shillings. You have justified our presence in regional missions by attributing it for, need, for, for, for the need for us to be part of securing peace, security, and stability of our regions. Given the statistics I've given you on how far away Haiti is, could you tell us what are the benefits and what are the intended consequences the government hopes to achieve by taking our troops to Haiti? Cabinet Secretary. Madam Speaker, the last question, I think... Uh, with a lot of respect to 
my colleague, when I came to Parliament, I found him in this same chamber. There used to be a library next door. I don't know whether he's still there. Many, many years. <laughs> I want to refer him the last question to the Minister of Interior. So ask, please uh, take time, invite, invite Professor Kindiki, give him the statistics of the distance and how many flights go there and the hours. Uh, uh, that, that is above my, it's not my domain, so I'll refer that to Professor Kindiki. And I'm sure the House has the powers using the standing orders to invite him, even this afternoon. Yes, this, the, 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 this, the second, the first one was, yes, Article 35 of the Constitution allows uh, you to get and provide information, any information, to any citizens. But that article must be interpreted with certain responsibility. And I'm sure if you read the chapter on national, the organs of the National Security Council and even KDF, and you being a very, very seasoned medical doctor, I am sure even sometimes you don't provide your client, your patient data to all and sundry. This is a plenary. And there are certain information which is the custodian is the National Security Council. 